Welcome to my podcast where I talk about all things related to money, mindset, finance, business, and investing. My name is Royston Cumberbatch, a qualified accountant with over 30 years' experience in finance and business. Coming from a very humble background, I have continuously challenged the assumptions and the expectations of what I'm capable of achieving for myself and others. Over the years, I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs to decipher finance and to make more money and to run highly successful businesses. On this podcast, I will share with you tips, strategies, techniques, and tools that you can use to make more money, manage money better, and to maximize your success. Welcome to James, uh, to the Financial Intelligence Mindset Podcast. James, it's so great to have you today after speaking with you on Clubhouse. And now you are here with me doing a podcast. So how is your day going? Yeah, amazing. Thank you very much for, for bringing me on and having a chat. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Cool, cool, cool. So let's start with like your, obviously, we're going to, we're going to focus on, on your financial journey, your financial story. But let's start with like, you know, your backstory in terms of tell us about yourself. Uh, just tell us some interesting facts that people may not know. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, my, so my name's James. Um, I'm in the world of fitness at the moment. That's my kind of career. Uh, I've been working over it. I was working in Dubai for over eight years um, as a fitness professional, so personal trainer, and then moving up the career ladder up to a general manager position. Uh, met, had my family over there, so I had my little boy uh, along with my wife, and then we decided to come back to the UK. And then when I came back to the UK, it was like you don't earn as much money, obviously, as you do over in Dubai, especially in, in the fitness world. Um, so then I started learning and trying to learn how to manage my money better or how to earn a little bit more or save a little bit more. Um, so I came across lots of different podcasts and audio books and, and blogs and things like that. So you could just learn from and the amount of things that are out there in order to save or make or, or manage your money better. There's just a, so much, so much that you can learn from. Um, and that's kind of brought me to where I am today. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a good financial position. Um, I've, I've made my own kind of uh, brand in terms of that I'm, I'm aiming to become the mortgageless man. That's kind of my my goal. Yeah, that's, to, yeah, goal. that's my goal to become financially free and, and not have have my mortgage hanging over me. Um, so I've got mm. investments and I've got a port, I've got a, a, a buy to let property and I've got a few side hustles. So yeah, I've got I've, I've learned a lot of things and, and that's I'm, and I'm on the journey at the moment. I'm not there yet, but I, I will be. Wow, be. wow, wow. That gym is a good journey. So I really love Dubai, right? So you said that you couldn't make as much money doing the um doing what you were doing in Dubai, but but why is it that you didn't think about having like a, a side hustle or something like that in Dubai? Because obviously Dubai is a great place to, I guess, to start building your wealth, right? Am I correct? It is, yeah. So it's good. financially, I was doing very well over in Dubai with in the in the fitness position that I was in. Um in order to I don't know, it kind of just, when I came back to the UK, it kind of just triggered something in me to think, oh, yeah, I need to I need to earn more. Because you're living a fantastic life over there in, yeah. in Dubai. Um, and what I had over there was substantial enough for what I wanted to do. And I loved the, the role that I was doing and, and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, it was, I suppose it was just that trigger that when you come back and you think, ah, I, I now need to do something. There's something not quite right. I'm not going in the direction I need to go in anymore. So that's why I then pivoted it and, and uh, started work on the side hustles and things. Yeah. So what was the big trigger for you in terms of like, OK, how do you say that? Obviously, you lived in Dubai, you have your family. I guess over there, you probably um, life is good. But then when you come over to the UK, you found that um, there, there must have been a trigger, right? Which kind of says, look, I need to make more money. I need to become, um, I don't know, um, debt free, as you said, mortgage free, right? That's a very good term, actually, mortgage-free. I do have my own concept around mortgage-free, so that I actually almost reached the stage of becoming mortgage-free um, years uh, about five years, five six years ago, and I decided actually instead of becoming mortgage-free, I actually used the, the equity in my property to um, to leverage up, really, you know, to build a property portfolio. But anyway, I mean, becoming mortgage-free is a good thing. Like people like Dave Ramsey, etc., says so obviously debt that hangs over you, right? You know, that debt, debt is a killer. So becoming mortgage free, I guess, frees you up to go and really do things that you really want to do. But um, so if, if I'm hearing you right, are, are you saying that in the UK, you can earn more in the fitness than in Dubai? Is that correct? 
Or is it the other way around? No, no, no. Sorry, the, the other way around. So in Dubai, I was earning a lot more in terms of fitness. Ah. But then when I come back to the UK, I wasn't earning near that as makes much sense. here. Because it, it's, it's a lifestyle now I'm here. over there, right? Am I correct? In Dubai, it's more of a lifestyle thing? Absolutely. Yeah, you're earning a, 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 a good wage over there. You you have a fantastic lifestyle. Um, going out and eating in amazing restaurants and, and spoiling yourself when you want to spoil yourself. Yeah, it's very expensive over there. Um, and that's why you get paid the, the, the rates that you do. And then when I came over here and being in the fitness world over here, you're just not earning that that amount of money that, that the same. So again, that's that was the trigger that think, oh, actually, OK, I need to do something. Yeah. But the weather is quite good over there. Am I correct? The weather is quite good. Right. So wasn't that a kind of a factor for you thinking? Maybe oh, the, weather's, like, the weather's amazing. I want yeah. to get some better. What, what was the pull factor for you to come to the UK? And what was the push factor for you to leave Dubai? Mainly from a financial perspective. I because uh, one reason I'm asking, right? Because for me, financial and I, I'm, well, I'm going to ask you about it, what what does financial intelligence mean to you? But for me, when people look at certain things, they kind of most decisions people make has financial implications, or people make decisions based on uh, financial projections, etc. So, from a financial perspective, when you were like in Dubai and you were thinking about coming back over to the UK. What were some of the dynamics? What were some of the things that you look at in making that decision? Well, it probably wasn't anything to do with financial. It was ah. more of a family. It oh. was more of a family decision. So coming back, um, it was it was my my mum and dad live around the corner, so we can go visit them. Uh, they want to see their grandson grow up a little bit more. Um, and some of the things actually in Dubai it kind of triggered me. Like when I was um, building fires, so we lived in a high story, uh, a high story building. We lived on the 47th floor mm. um, and there was just there, it just seemed that there was a lot more fires um, <laughs> came was coming about. in like there was a fire in the opposite building to us. Um, and just to be able to get out of the building, there's health and safety is a, is a little bit not as 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 um, strict over there than it is over here. So it was just, there was a little bit of a risk factor over there as well um but yeah it was mainly a, a, a family decision family. so to family come, come back finance. here and family yeah. before finance is that right say it again sorry the family before finance absolutely absolutely oh, cool, cool cool all right so tell us some of the things like you know like what what was your biggest mistake with money what's the biggest mistake you've had in terms of like you know i mean for me i know like i've actually i was just actually thinking about that earlier you know in my young days, I think I've actually made some silly mistakes, you know, um, places I was working and I probably could have done things differently. I certainly know that actually I probably blown like at least, uh, I know it sounds crazy, right? I've blown at least a hundred thousand pounds, just like going on, wow. going on holidays and just like, and obviously I've, I've enjoyed my life, but I'm saying, you know, you know, like going to the Bahamas, going to Cuba, going to India, going to, all these places that I've been, I think some of some, like going back home to Grenada two, three, two, three times a year. But when I actually think back, I said maybe I should have invested that money into properties more. And then I'd have had the income to like really go wherever I want. But I think instead, I think I probably uh, spent too much. I was more happier in my early life spending than I was investing. But now I'm a bit older, I'm happier investing. So what, so, What's one of the big mistakes you've made? I probably wouldn't say it was, it was a huge mistake, but then maybe looking back at it, it's basically you want to you should have started earlier, and I should have started earlier. Um, I always remember, um, I think when I first did my my paper round, when I started as, as a boy, that I was earning I don't know ten pounds a week or something. My mum and dad always said to me, right, "You need to start putting some money away towards a pension." A pension? <laughs> I was I was sixteen years old. Why would I want to put money into a pension? That's like 50 years away. But then thinking about it, if I had, if I had had that, that head start of 10 years of yeah. putting money away into a pension, uh, who knows if I would have been a millionaire by now in terms of making, getting that mindset and putting that, putting that money away and that habit of putting money away and investing yeah. it. Um, so yeah, maybe just that thing, maybe just starting that a little bit earlier. That's great. That's great. So now that you uh, are older, and you reflect on that discussion with your parents, would you advise someone who is young, like uh, obviously 16 years now, would you say pension or property? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, see, I've always, 
with regards to your pension, if you're working for a company, yeah. obviously the best thing to do is obviously to max out the pension contributions. It's, it's so that was the easy. first thing. That was the first thing I did when I came back to the UK. So the company that I work with, uh, they started me off on on a three percent contribution scheme, uh, but they max they give you a maximum of six percent. So yeah. straight away, I obviously maxed out my maxed it up to six percent. Obviously, I'm not making as much money in my bank account on a monthly basis. But it's okay because I know that it, I'm getting paid even more because it's going into my pension. Um, so if you start start that out, so get that in place in terms of your pension, and then obviously start looking into the property and the uh, additional side hustles. So yeah, I would probably say maxing out your pension first, and then looking into the property world. Yeah, but again, it also depends on like if you're an employee, as you said, right? If you're an employee, it's a no-brainer from a tax perspective to max the pension. But, you know, we all know about something called like the, the Robert Kiyosaki, the, the cash flow quadrant, right? Some people are entrepreneurs from a very young age. And obviously, it's not what it's taught in the schools, right? But some people never go on the employee route, you know? They just go straight into uh, the entrepreneurial world, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess if you are in the entrepreneurial world, then it makes sense to put your money into probably in my, in my view, into investments, you know? Well, I mean, mm-hmm. you can still have a pension because there are actually tax efficient ways to invest in a pension anyway, but that's probably um, um, for someone to really decide, you know, depending on what they want to do with their money, right? So good, good. So let's move this on. So what's your financial game plan now? I mean, um, now that you've kind of been through some stuff, you've, you've been to Dubai, you've seen Dubai, you're over here, you've got family. I think you mentioned that you had a buy to let property, you, you, want, you, want, you want to be mortgage-free. So have you got like this mapped out? Um, and the reason I'm asking, for me, a game plan is like, so I play chess with my boy all the time, right? My, my 16-year-old boy, I play chess with him all the time. And when I'm playing chess with him, even before I make the first move, I'm thinking, what, is all, what are all his possible moves? And as we get into it, you know, there's only one objective, right? Which is obviously to checkmate the king. But every move you make, you have to look at the consequences. So for me, in finance, people should manage their finances the same way. They should really have a game plan of saying, I want financial freedom. I want to achieve X among by this date. So what's your financial game plan? Yeah, so yeah, again, it is that financial freedom. Um, Like I said, I do have one property at the moment. So I was looking before COVID hit, I was looking to maybe look to get my second property. I have got a a deposit that I could put down. Um, But then COVID hit and the whole world went crazy. Um, And then uh, the the markets obviously just dropped down, just just bombed. So at that point, I was like, oh, maybe property isn't that that a a good idea. Maybe I could put it into investments instead. So I threw I threw my savings into Vanguard into uh, the S&P 500 and the FTSE, FTSE 100. Um, and I've managed to get about 18% back from it at this moment in time. So that that's grown for me at, at now. Um, and then I'm just looking at the property market just to see what's happening to then maybe move on to get to get my second one. Um, obviously, it's, it's boomed up a little bit. So maybe in maybe six months time, it might drop down a little bit with furlough ending and, and things like that. Now, I know that you, you can't, time the market and you shouldn't time the market and it's all about the amount of time in the market that's what you want to try and do um but when the opportunities come up you just need to keep your eyes and ears open to think oh yeah that's a great opportunity i'm going to jump on that so uh yeah it's just about building building my portfolio in terms of uh, uh property um still having that that investment leg as well um so one of the things i, I talk about uh, and i've showed on my instagram page is, is having a table so if you've got a table with one leg and that one leg it signifies your salary, uh, if anything happens to your salary, then your table is just going to crash down onto the floor and your financials are in, in, in ruin. Whereas if you've got a table and it's got four legs, so you've got a buy to let property, you've got uh, some investments, you've got your nine to five job and you've got maybe some side hustles or things like that. If one of them, one of them crashes or one of them burns or goes down, your table is still going to stand. You're still going to be in a financial stable place. So, for example, if I get a property and uh, something happens to the tenant and I can't get a tenant into that buy-to-let property, I'm obviously then not making money. But if I've got investments and my nine-to-five and my side hustles, I will still be financially okay. So it's that little bit of diversification that I've got. Um, and, yeah, it's just that's that's my, my roadmap in terms of driving up my side hustles and my side business, keeping my nine-to-five role, putting money away in investments and then keep an eye out for opportunities for, for property. I like it. I, I call it the MSOI strategy, you know, multiple streams of income strategy. I mean, it's something I did even as a youngster back back over in Grenada. 
before I came to the UK, you know, I had like, I was teaching people in the evening times. I was working as an employee for, uh, as a financial controller for bakery. I was doing farming. I was still like mentoring or coaching people one-to-one sometimes, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I, I think having that multiple stream of income is, is quite important. So you, you mentioned a few funds that you invest in there, S&P 500 and um, FTSE 100, obviously like those are indices, yeah? So when you're looking to invest, how do you select your investments? I mean, if, if someone was listening to this podcast and they wanted to go and decide, okay, I, I want to invest in a, in a fund. Wow, that sounds good. He got 18% return on the fund. I want to get in. What are some of the things that you look for when, you, when you're deciding what to put your money in, say as a fund, et cetera? Um, yeah, it was just from the kind of the learning a little bit in the audio books that, that, that I know of. So I, I'm not looking to put all my money in in individual companies or stocks or shares and things like that. Just from what I learned, it just seems a, a little bit riskier. Yes, you can have all the knowledge in the world and find out what's happening in terms of individual uh, individual yeah. stocks and shares. Uh, but but to me, um, indices and and ETFs are, are the way to go. They're they're kind of they're, they're not risk free, obviously, but they're very 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 low risk. That, and that's where I like to have my money in, in, a, in a low risk scheme. Um, actually, listening to some of the guys on uh, on Clubhouse, I've, I've now learned one of the one of the, the best ones to put my money into is to the, the the Vanguard Life Strategy eighty twenty. Um, so I'm going to be looking into that at this moment in time, and I think I think that's the way I'm going to go uh, for the future. Yeah, that's 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 quite good. Yeah, because what we're talking about here for people who are listening, people who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about index funds, ETF funds. These are funds that actually hold a basket of uh, stocks, right? So instead of putting your money into one stock, say, for example, right now, obviously, Tesla this week dropped 1.5 uh, billion into Bitcoin. Maybe people cannot buy into um, Tesla right now or even Amazon is too expensive. But there are good um, ETFs out there like VU which is the S&P 500 index, you know what I mean? Or even ARK, A-R-K-K, which are these good funds people can put their money into. And these these ETFs have, have grown over the years, you know? Um, I think the only time I was watching the charts and the only time that ETFs and stuff dropped was in March 20, um, I mean, dropped significantly was in March 2020 when it came to the lockdown. But all of them skyrocketed, you know what I mean? So, wow, yes, yeah, so that's good, good. So, if you had a hundred million right now, what would you do with it? I mean, if you had a hundred million in cash right now, James, what would you do with it? Wow, that's a question. <laughs> uh, right, well, so I would probably put a lot of it into into property. So then, um, so then I, again, I would be financially free, work for the rest of my life. What um, kind of property? Sort out my mum and dad. Get what kind of properties, like you know, like Sorry? yeah, like family homes, single lets. I don't know, HMOs. I mean, t- t- tell us a bit more about just. Yeah, I, I don't. I to be honest, at the moment, like to so the moment in time, I don't know enough personally about managing an HMO or, or managing um, that kind of property. My my buy to let is a single let property, um, so it's it's that. So I need to learn before I jump into things in, into things like that. Um, but obviously, look after my mum, my mum and dad, and, and pay off their uh, houses and, and things like that. Um, and yeah, I think my kind of goal has always been to, once I am free, is to share my time with others. So obviously money is not is not an aspect anymore. So whether it's volunteering for something or spending more time with my boy or my wife or, or that kind of thing, it's sharing. Uh, right. Time is, is such a most, va- uh, a most the most valuable thing that you can you can have. So if I can share my time with others and help improve other people's lives, because my life is is now is now financially secure. Yeah, that's that's what I would like to do. I like that. I, I like that. So, what what would you say is your why? What drives you? What 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 makes you? I don't know. I, I don't know if you have an alarm or not. But what makes you jump out of bed in the morning and think, "Wow, I want to go do some stuff today." I mean, or maybe when you when you don't feel into jump out of bed, what makes you think, "Well, you but you know what? I better get up and I better get going." What's your why? Uh, my why is is my family is the time the time that I've I've spent uh, at home. Yeah. So this this furlough time has really been like the 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 thing that said, oh yeah, that's that's what it is. So I keep trying to explain it to my wife and say, look, this is what I want to do. I want to drive this side hustle so then I don't have to work and I have time with you guys. And she didn't get it. She didn't quite understand yeah. what I was what the lifestyle was that I was trying to get to. 
Um, and she's been working from home. So she's been here stuck in the office and I've been downstairs uh, with my boy. The first lockdown, we were just playing Lego and playing football and just playing loads of games and just doing loads of stuff together. Um, and then it clicked for her to think, OK, that's what he wants. That's the lifestyle he wants in terms of that you're spending time at home. You've still got money in. So you don't have that financial burden of making sure that you have to work and pay bills and things like that. You've got that. That is kind of taken care of. And that's why it is then spending the time together and doing loads of things together, because that's that's what we remember is, is memories and experiences and, and family time together. Um, and that's that's my drive. That's my why. That's what I, I want to try and uh, have more more of for my life is, is the freedom. That's big. That's big. So have you got any like business ambitions, any kind of businesses that you would like to go into and, and, and why? Is there any, I mean, cu currently you're an employee, am I correct? So I'm an employee at the moment. Um, but like I said, I do have some side hustles that I do where I help others. Money coaching I do on a one-to-one on -a -one basis. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the main thing where I show people how to manage their money a little bit better. And I have one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. Um, so yeah, if I, can, if I can then use the money that I earn from that, and then drive that into my investments and my port and my property portfolio. Um, then that would be amazing. That's again, that's yeah. if I could because I love it so much. I just I get so passionate about it. My wife is saying that when I have, she can hear me downstairs when I've got one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with people over Zoom. Because I get I get so excited and I get animated and my arms go crazy and yeah, that's yeah, kind of thing. Of course, that's good. Um, I can see you're very energetic and very passionate, and, and that's quite important, man. You know what I mean? So what do you I mean, tell, tell me one of your um your your client case studies. I mean, what's your best client case study? Someone who you've helped out to really help them to improve their finance or someone to I don't know, improve their health or improve their mindset. What's your best client case study? Yeah, so so far, um, I've had one of my um, one of my employees or one of my one of my colleagues that came up to me and said, "James, look, I'm I'm struggling. I'm on I'm on the line. Um, is there any chance to get a salary increase?" And for me, it wasn't my decision whether they get a salary increase or not. It's usually a corporate decision, and it's very difficult to get a salary increase off the cuff. They usually do it on their annual reviews. So I said, look, I can't get you a salary increase, but let's see if I can save you some money. Let's see if I can help you uh, in order to what you're spending. So we sat down with the family there and, and we looked at what they were spending. Um, and then basically they, they looked at to see they had some equity in their home and they had a lot of debts that they had. So we just said, look, well, why don't we, we if you look, potentially you could remortgage your house and uh, clear off all your debts. So use that equity that in your house to clear off your debts. You're then going to be debt debt free and then you won't have to pay your debts every month and the, the amount that you're paying towards your mortgage is going to be is going to be not as not as much as the debts that you're currently paying so we did that as well as some other little things so shared a few other things with them just like looking there at utilities changing their utilities across looking at like cashback websites that they could use getting a cashback credit card just to save a little bit because again even if it's just a little bit today it compounds and compounds and compounds over years and years and years that you're doing it. You're going to be saving hundreds and thousands of pounds on on daily things that you're going to be spending money on. So then, they, so we got them to do that, and uh, yeah, now now they're they're debt free. Um, he sent me a, a little uh, a note the other day to say here's a little token of my appreciation, ten pound Amazon voucher, just to say a, a thank you because I've basically restructured their, their financial lives and just showing them how to, in the future, what, what to do. Such a great feeling to be able to help help them out. That's great, man. That brings me nicely onto this question I want to ask you. I mean, I asked it on my last podcast, so hopefully, uh, I know you actually listened. Hopefully, it's not a surprise. What does the term financial intelligence mean to you? So financial intelligence is basically um, doing the right things with your money, is, is doing it for the to make it work for you rather than against you. So things like debt and credit cards and loans and things like that, they're all working against you because the money is mean something that's worth property or things like that. It's going to be working. It's going to be working for you. So you're going to be growing your net worth and growing your assets just by doing that. So yeah, that's what I would say. I mean, I hear what you say, and I'm a big fan of um, good debt and bad debt. And I've covered episodes on, on I've covered um, episodes on this podcast before about how to use your debt to build your wealth. But I think what I'm hearing from you is that um, you are the kind of guy that you would tell people in the first case, 
stay away from debt anyway. Don't go any close to debt. Am I correct? No, actually, no, I, I disagree. So I basically, I've got a little structure that I use when I sit with people. Um, it's, like, it's like building your financial house. The first one is risk management. So making sure you have uh, the right type of insurances and things like that. If anything yeah. was to go wrong, obviously you need to have that first. The second thing is your debt management. So I, the thing I, I say is get rid of bad debts. Not uh, good debt is a good thing. I've obviously got good debt. I've got good debt in in my buy to let portfolio, um, and I, I will be getting more good debt in order to grow it. But it, the, the the fundamentals is getting rid of bad debt to start off with. So the credit cards, the loans, the things that you're you've spent money on. So you you've spent money on liabilities so for example for example you've taken out a loan to buy a car is the worst thing that you could possibly do in terms of using debt it's just it's just a shocking so um yeah it's using that good debt i 100 agree with you in terms of the good debt um but it's clearing the bad debt first that's a, that's yeah. what i would always I like say. that actually i mean and you're right you know so I've got um, some friends who live, at, I mean, I don't want to say where they live anyway. Maybe they listen to this podcast. It's crazy. <laughs> but they, they got married and, you know, they got, they got a, they bought a home. And, um, you know, the wife has a nice job. The guy has a nice job. And what they did, they both go and bought like two brand new vehicles. I'm thinking, man, why? You know, look to get a try, try and get a second property. You know what I mean? And then that property can give you some, some extra passive income which at least one of you can buy a, a nice car with and the other can just buy, you know, a banger. Um, but at least, you know, you both have a nice car between you, you know. But I guess it's just, I think, well, it is a matter of managing your emotions, right? And I, I quite liked, you know, like how you came on today and, and you shared some really, really practical tips of how people can be smarter with their money, how people can build wealth by just doing the small things, you know what I mean? And that's really, really, really good. So, I mean, you, you were talking about some of the things that you do, the courses that you have, et cetera. So if people are trying to find you, I mean, where can they find you? Where can they find out more about you and what you have to offer? And um, yeah, just, um, I mean, how do you work with people? Talk, talk a bit more about that. Yeah, so the main thing I'm trying to grow at the moment, the moment is my Instagram page. So I'm trying to post as, as much as I can, usually on a, on a daily basis or every couple of days, just sharing what I do and sharing my journey. So I'm posting, oh, look at it, or all these kind of things. Um, and then if anyone wants to have a chat with me and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, drop me a message. Just say, hi, James, saw your message about, about debt. I've got a few debts in place. Would love to have a chat on how I can clear it a little bit quicker. Can we put a plan together? Yeah, no problem. When is best? Jump on a Zoom. Right, and let's, and let's get it done. Yeah, um, so, yeah, it's, um, that's, that's the best way. It's just dropping Instagram? messages. And where can people message you? I'm saying, what's your Instagram? Oh, so my, my Instagram is 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 uh, James underscore the mortgageless man. Ah, I like that, the mortgageless man. I like that. That that's a very that's, that's a the very goal. Good yeah. One. And um, I, and if, if they want to email you, I mean, or find your website, you, you have a website yet? Uh, I haven't got a website. I used to have a blog. Um, I used to have a money blog where I was blogging all things about money. Um, but unfortunately, it, it caught it caught a, a, a virus. Um, and when I was sharing with people, they were they got these odd pop ups, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna just gonna close it down, unfortunately, which is a shame because I really enjoy doing it. Um, but I think now Instagram is still just as just as good, um, and Clubhouse is just as good because you can hear me and and you see what I'm like, and and I'm authentic. I'm not trying to sell you loads and loads of different things. Um, I'm here. I want to help people. Um, and if you want to have a chat, I'm, I'm more than happy to jump on a call. Yeah, yeah. So, James, so the idea I got from you is that you are mainly using like organic, you know, putting yourself out there, being passionate, sharing your knowledge. And from that, people, people obviously gravitate towards you and then you jump on a call with them and you show them how you can help them. Right. And I always say to people that profit is a reward for, for, um, for creating value. So by giving value to people, by helping people, then those people are going to um, really and truly um by helping people, you, you make more profits, basically. So by wanting to help people, it's always a good place to start. You know what I mean? So that Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's people out there that they want to try and sell you something, like sell you a product or something like that, that is then going to cost you money on a, on a monthly basis for, for whatever whatever it is. But in terms of myself and, and yourself as well, is that we want to help people save money or we want to try and help people make more money. That's yeah. the that's the difference. We're not trying to scam them to take their money. We want them to do well because if they do well, 
we do well at the same time. So it's like a win-win partnership type of uh, type of situation. So yeah, that's that's what I'd like. That's the, the I, I met with one guy and he, he said, and um, at first I was like, oh no, I'm not interested in this this kind of business thing. <laughs> um, but then when he explained it and he said that look, you're just trying to help people to save money. You're trying to put them in a better financial position. You kind of think, yeah, actually, yeah, that I, I like that. I want to try and help people. So that's the, and, and that's why I enjoy doing it is because you're helping people to get in a better position. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. James, wow. I want to say um, it's, it's, thank you very much for coming on to the podcast today, man. You've shared some real gems. Hopefully I, I can reconnect with you sometime in the future. And, and you know, when, when you're mortgage free, you know, and you, you can tell people actually how you <laughs> did it, you know what I mean? And um, I look forward Absolutely. to with you on, um, on Clubhouse, you know what I mean? Clubhouse is a new dropping conversation app. And how are you finding Clubhouse, by the way? I mean, how are you finding it, Clubhouse, as a, as a job? I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> um, the amount of, of gems, the, the amount of content and stuff that you get from the different rooms, um, it's, just been, it's just been incredible. Like I said, the, the, the Vanguard uh, life strategy that I, I, I realized was from um, Clubhouse, from a guy that I actually know in Dubai that I, connect, I connected with on Clubhouse again. He was talking. I didn't know his background previously. Um, but now I've found out from him that he's he's looked after um, countries' money. So like trillions and trillions and trillions of pounds that he's wow. been looking after. So he's the guy to kind of know he knows his stuff. So when you when you then connect with people, you learn more things. So, yeah, it's a, just a, such a fantastic networking. You can network every day uh, and you can talk to people every single day from all walks of life and whatever you want. I love it. I absolutely I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's great, man. So for people who are listening, who don't know what Clubhouse is, Clubhouse is the new uh, audio-only drop-in conversation app uh, only currently on the iPhone where you can uh, just drop into rooms or you can open your own rooms. If anyone is listening to this podcast who wants an invite to Clubhouse, send me an email at roy at mmedu or I'll, I'll give you an invite to Clubhouse. <laughs> so that's me so james thanks thanks for coming on and uh, i want to wish you all the very best wishes on your journey and as i said we will connect again no doubt very soon uh, and i'll see you on clubhouse absolutely thanks roy really appreciate it uh, take care man be good to yourself and others and see look, you after your family. look after your family bye-bye will do absolutely bye-bye cheers thank you very much for listening to my podcast i hope you enjoyed the show you can find out more about me by googling my name Royston Cumberbatch. I'm on all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You can find me on YouTube as Roy Cumberbatch. And if you are listening on YouTube, please hit that uh, subscribe button. Or you can find me on my website at www.rackmac.com. That's R-A-C-M-A-C-S dot com. It'd be great to hear from you. And do feel free to tell me about any topics you want me to cover on future episodes. Until next time, be good to yourself and others, keep positive and reaching for your financial goals. Bye-bye.